In this video, we're going to talk about linear approximation. The idea is that if we look at the graph of a function and the graph of its tangent line near the point a comma f of a, we can see that the tangent line is a very good approximation of the function whenever x is close to a. In fact, in this graph, you can't even tell the difference. The tangent line overlaps the graph of the function for a good portion of the graph when it's close to a. So we could work out the equation of the tangent line. We know that the slope is f prime of a, and we can use the point slope form and solve for y. So y would equal f of a plus f prime at a times, in parentheses, x minus a. We call the function, which is has the equation of the tangent line, the linearization of f of x near a. And we use capital L of x to represent that. It is also called the tangent line approximation of f of x near a. And sometimes it's just called the linear approximation of f of x near a. And so we can use that formula for the tangent line as an approximation for f of x. And this can be useful in many situations. For example, if I wanted to calculate the square root of 4.01, and I don't have a calculator, I could use the linearization of f of x equals radical x to get a very good approximation. So what do I need? Well, I need a value of a. So it doesn't tell me explicitly what my a value should be, but since I'm calculating the square root of 4.01, a natural choice of a would be four. So let's see, f of x equals x to the one half power, so I can use the power rule find f prime of x, and find f prime at 4. And that's going to be 1 fourth. So remember my equation for the linearization. f of x is approximately f of a plus f prime at a times x minus a. So we're going to use x equals 4.01 and a equaling 4. So radical 4.01 then should be approximately radical 4 plus 1 fourth of 4.01 minus 4. And I can work that out even without a calculator and get 2 Point zero zero two five two and twenty five ten thousandths. Just to check, let me see what my calculator says, and the calculator gives an approximation of two point zero zero two four nine eight. So we can see that uh, this is a very good approximation. Now related to the idea of a, of a linearization is the notion of differentials. So we've seen differentials in Leibniz notation. That's what the dx and the dy are called. And they have different meanings in different contexts. So in Leibniz notation, dx over dy, it looks like a fraction and it really helps us in many instances to think of it like a fraction 
but it's not a fraction. It represents a derivative. Here, however, the dx and the dy, we think of them, even though it's two letters, we think of it as a single independent variable or a single dependent variable. And the connection between dx and dy is that dy equals f prime of dx. Here's my word of caution. We really do have to be careful here. Uh, when we use the word differential, if we're talking about a linear approximation, then it does mean that it is a finite value. It represents a finite value like a, a regular variable. Um, but in other situations, it does not represent a finite value. It does not represent a number. So now, if we think of dx as being the same as delta x, what's delta x? Well, delta x is the difference between uh, x and a fixed point a. And then delta y, as it's, it's going to be almost the same as dy. Now, delta y is the difference between f of x and f of a. And dy is defined as it is up here, f prime of x dx. So if that's true, then we would have f of x minus f of a is about f prime at a times delta x. And we have the same linearization then. So let's see how this could help us. Suppose we have uh, the radius of a circle. It's measured to be uh, 10 centimeters with some margin of error, uh, 0 0.05 centimeters. What is the maximum possible error in using this radius value to compute the area of the circle? Well, we know that a is pi r squared. a is a function of r. If I calculate di, dA by dr, then we'll get uh, 2 pi r. And by the way, it's not a coincidence that the derivative of a with respect to r of the area, so the derivative of the area, gives you the circumference. All right, so now changing to differentials, that would say dA is 2 pi r dr. And given that dr is 0 0.05, that's our error. dr is 10. And we can calculate that the maximum possible error, error in the calculation of the area is pi square centimeters. So it's interesting that if I look at the relative error, so in other words, the maximum possible error in A divided by the calculated value of A, I get 1 one hundredth. If I look at the relative error in R, that would be 0 0.05 divided by 10. That is 5 thousandths. Uh, so because we're squaring the R, that's why our relative error actually gets doubled. And that kind of makes sense. All right, I hope you've enjoyed this short video on linear approximation.